Hi everyone, it's Laura here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to share with you how to create an easy watercolor beach scene with just a few easy and quick steps and stamps by Lawn Fawn. And before diving into the tutorial, I wanted to let you know that this video is part of the Craft Collabs Christmas in July video hop. The hop will be full of holiday themed inspiration and there will be a giveaway sponsored by the Little Paper Tree. All the information will be in the description box down below, so make sure to check that out. And now let's get started. I started off by die cutting some watercolor cardstock by Canson, so this is Canson Excel watercolor cardstock. I die cut it to an A2 size using the Lone Fawn Large Stitched Rectangle Stackable Dies, and then I'm going to start creating my beach scene. For today, I decided to bust out my White Knights watercolors. These are Russian watercolors, they are available on Amazon and they are pretty good quality for a rather affordable price. I will have them linked in the description box below together with all the supplies that I'll be using today. And I also have a little unboxing and swatch video here on my channel if you want to check that out too. I mixed my own colors because I wanted to create shades that were a little bit different from the ones in the pan. So I created this light brown for the sand that I'm now painting in. So you see all I did is basically lay down the paint on the bottom portion of my watercolor cardstock. I created a bit of a wavy line at the top because that's where my C line will be. And then I created a number effect using some water. And at this point, I started adding some texture to my sand, basically doing some stippling motions with my paintbrush. And this is, by the way, a size 8 paintbrush by Da Vinci. It's a German brand. And I chose a larger brush because I had to paint in a larger area than just an image. While the sun was drying, I started working on the sky. I mixed in a light blue color and I'm starting to build some intensity in the top portion of my panel. I'm going to leave a tiny strip empty at the center because that's where the sea will go. I'm using, this is just a makeup cotton remover to basically pick up some of the paint and create my clouds. But at this point, the sky was still a little bit too light, so I added in a second layer to create some contrast with the clouds and make them more visible. Watercolors will dry lighter than you see them when they're wet, but I still think it's a good idea to start light and build your intensity as you go, especially if you're not an expert and, like me in this case, it's your first attempt at something. So you see, I used these cotton pads to remove some of the paint where I wanted my clouds to be. And then with a finer brush, I'm going to add some detail to the clouds. I'm using that same light blue mixture and I'm going to also add in the blue that I mixed in for the water because I thought the water will sort of reflect in the clouds. So you will have a little bit of that color in the clouds too. As you can see, I'm not doing anything fancy really. I'm using again a very diluted version of that color and I'm basically adding a line at the bottom of the clouds and a few more lines in the clouds themselves to create some shapes. And then once the sky was completely dry and the sand too, I could go ahead and start painting the water. Now, when you see the final result, this might look like something that's quite difficult to achieve, but actually it was easier than I thought. I was inspired by a video that I will link down below, and it's actually a video about bullet journaling that is something I started recently. So I'm planning to have some content about that on my channel too. But basically all that I'm doing is I am adding some squiggly motions, some wavy lines with my paintbrush and I'm making sure to leave some white spaces between these lines. 
these white spaces will basically mimic the light reflection in the water waves and the squiggly lines are the waves themselves. So we are at the same time adding some texture and some motion to this ocean background and also creating our highlights by leaving these white spaces in between the waves. I went in with a second layer of color adding a little bit of a more darker blue towards the back of my ocean so the part that's further away from us and once that was done I left everything aside to dry and I actually did not like the way the sun was looking with those large dots I thought they were a little bit unappealing so I wetted the area again and I started adding first a little bit more color to hide those dots and make them a little bit less visible and then I added some basically just some random areas or of darker color to create again texture in the sand that I felt looked a little bit more realistic to add some foam where the sand and the ocean waves meet, I am going to use some white acrylic paint. This is some inexpensive acrylic paint that I've had in my stash for a long time now that I use for stars or for things like that. And the way I am creating the look of foam is by adding some tiny dots. So again, with some stippling motions of the paintbrush, I am creating that foam. And I'm going to add a little bit of that white acrylic paint in between the waves and on the top of my clouds. At this point my background was ready so I could go ahead and start working on the images. I stamped them on some more Canson Excel watercolor cardstock using Distress Oxide in Antique Linen and I'm going to watercolor them too using my White Knight watercolors. You could use Distress inks if you preferred, that way you don't have to mix your own colors and the painting is a little bit faster maybe. But I wanted to experiment and I wanted to practice my watercoloring skills, so that's why I used, let's say, regular watercolors today. The reason why I chose Antique Linen Distress Oxide to stamp my images is that I wanted the contours to be very soft almost like picture book type coloring. This is not going to look exactly like no line water coloring because the distress oxide did not fade away, but that was exactly the look I was going for. If I wanted to do some more true quote unquote uh, no line water coloring, I would have used either fade out ink by Ink on Tree, which is now my go to ink for no line coloring, or distress ink in antique linen. The images I am using today are all part of different sets by Lon Fon. Everything that's beach themed is part of the Life is Good stamp set and the rest of the images are from the Cheery Christmas stamp set. I also used one image of Santa on a sleigh which you will see a little bit later in the video and that is part of the Winter Sky stamp set and as I said these are all by Lon Fon and will all be listed and linked in the description box of the video as well as on my blog where you will have picture links too. The way I'm painting the images is by first adding the pigment in the areas that I think will be the darkest. So I'm basically picking one part of the image to be in shadow and this will be the left side of the image for pretty much all the images in today's card. That is where I'm going to put down my watercolors and then I'm going to rinse off my brush, load it with some clean water and drag the pigments out towards the highlight to create sort of an ombre effect and create dimension on the images. I am sticking to neutrals and colors that remind of Christmas because as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is part of a video hop and the theme is Christmas in July. There are two stamps that you can win. Uh, if you hop along and you will find all the information in the description box down below. But coming back to the card, I also wanted to show you that in order to get a little bit of a 
higher depth in my shadows, I went in with some colored pencils in colors that are similar to the ones that I have on the images, and I'm going to add some shadows using the pencils themselves. And this one here are the color blend pencils by Spectrum Noir. I'm using a very light hand and adding the color just in the very shadow areas, so in very narrow areas. And because this is watercolor cardstock and because I'm not pressing a lot with my pencils, I'm also going to get some nice texture that will add to the picture book uh, feel of this card today. The last image that I needed is Santa with the sleigh. As I mentioned, this is part of the Winter Skies stamp set by Lone Fawn, and I stamped it with Distress Oxide in brushed corduroy, and then I added a couple of layers of pumice stone, again on some Canson Excel watercolor cardstock. Once the images were all ready, I used my scan and cut machine to cut them out. There are coordinating dies available too, and I will list them in the description box as well, in case you are interested in those. I trimmed down my watercolor cardstock to a panel that's a little bit shorter than my card base, and then I used Distress Oxide in brushed corduroy and a blending brush to basically add color to one of the cutouts. I'm going to cut this in two using again my guillotine trimmer by Tonic Studios and I'm using these two little strips of cardstock to create some small borders that I'm going to glue to the top and bottom of my panel, so of my ocean scene. The borders that I created this way are going to help me separate the scene from the card base a little bit. And you can see the base already on screen, that is some vanilla cardstock that I die cut again with the Lone Fawn large stitched rectangle stackables, so I obtained an A2 size rectangle with a stitched detail all around. And in order to add a little bit more detail to the base, I quickly brushed the Distress Oxide in brushed corduroy on the edges. I then could go ahead and start assembling everything and I started by taping down the watercolored background on the card base. I then started adhering the images and composing the scene and for this I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive because by using some liquid glue you have a little bit of wiggle room to position things exactly where you want. The last image is Santa and then off camera I went ahead and actually stamped the sentiment too. But before that I added a few more details to the foamy part of the ocean, to the waves and to the clouds using a Sakura number no. 10 white jelly roll pen. As I said off camera I stamped the sentiment. This reads Life is Good and is part of the stamp set by Lone Fawn with the same name, so that's called Life is Good too. I stamped it with brushed corduroy, I mounted everything on a top folding A2 card base, and then I added some drop shadows under my images to ground them a little bit more, and for that I'm using again one of my Spectrum Noir color blend pencils. And here you can see the final result. This card was actually outside my comfort zone, but it turned out easier than I thought it would be. And I hope that this tutorial will inspire you to try your hand and create your own beach scene. If you do, make sure to share your cards and tag me. I am at a bit of my crafts because I would like to see your cards. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, you can support this channel by giving this video a thumbs up, leaving a comment and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. You can find a list of all the supplies used to create today's card in the description box down below, together with the video hub and the giveaway details. As always, thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.